Losing belly fat after 30 doesn't need to be difficult. Because after coaching men for eight years using my science-based data-driven method, I've discovered eight counterintuitive truths that will help you lose body fat without wasting any time or effort. And in this video, I'll explain each truth and how you can implement it into your routine. So you can get and stay lean no matter your age or how hectic your schedule might be. So just quickly, imagine you're in a sinking boat and you're frantically trying to scoop the water out with your hands. You're working hard at it, but the water just keeps rising because you don't have a bucket. So no matter how fast you're scooping it out with your hands, the situation is not gonna change because you don't have the right tool for the job. And this is a little bit like trying to burn off the belly fat around our hips, lower belly and chest by doing more ab crunches and core workouts. Because it feels like you're doing the right thing, you're feeling a burn around your abs. But the truth is, fat and muscle are two different things. And I see a lot of men, especially as they get older, throughout their 30s and their 40s and beyond, they struggle to get the body fat off the chest and off the waist. And they're trying to train this fat off by doing more crunches, more core workouts, more ab exercises, without realizing that we cannot spot reduce body fat in a specific area, unless you do liposuction or something like that. So instead, if you wanna get rid of the fat off these areas and keep it off, you need to get your metabolism burning off more body fat, which I'm gonna show you in this second truth. So think of your body like a bank account. We need to withdraw more money than what we deposit. In other words, you need to burn more calories than what you're eating. Problem is for most men, the last spot the body likes to lose the fat is around the hips and belly and, and specifically the lower belly. However, when you sustain a consistent fat loss mode and your metabolism is burning off more than you eat for a longer period, you'll see the fat burn away from the chest and work its way down towards the lower belly. And this is not about starving yourself. All you need to do is create a sustainable gap between what you're burning and what you're eating. Because when you create this gap, this is when your metabolism will be forced to burn off the extra body fat stored around your torso. And if you take a sustainable approach, you can be doing this at a pace of one to two pounds per week. So for most men who consistently maintain a certain step level or calorie burn level, that could be as little as 600 calories in that gap per day. But that may need adjusting depending on how much body fat you have to lose and when you're gonna go through phases of dropping the first 10 and the next 10, etc. So ultimately adjusting your diet will help you continue to burn the body fat so you can get to the last spot being that lower belly. And speaking of diets, there's a common problem you must avoid, which we're gonna talk about in truth number three. So imagine you've got a bucket and a cup, you're trying to fill up this bucket with a cup of water, but after a few pours, you realize the water level is not changing. And after a few minutes, you realize there's a crack underneath the bucket and the water is just leaking out without you even noticing. So you can work harder trying to put more cups in, into that bucket, but it's gonna continue leaking and you won't be able to keep it full. And this example reminds me of guys who are hitting the gym six or seven days a week and trying to force in even more cardio on top of that. Setting challenges to continuously beat their records in steps or even sign up to marathons or something like this, but are still overweight and not losing any more body fat. This even applies to world-class athletes like this Croatian water polo player who turned up to the Paris Olympics with a classic dad bod looking physique. Now, I'm not talking about water polo, this is not about sport, but you'd think that someone who is training every single day, likely for hours to compete at the Olympics, would probably look more like a ripped machine because they're doing far more cardio and more workouts than a typical CEO or busy professional with misses and kids at home that they need to look after. Now, in the case of this uh, Olympic athlete, clearly his diet is the reason he's not losing more body fat because he's already doing so much exercise. And this is a problem that I see for many guys over 30 and 40 and 50 who think that if they just train harder, it's gonna magically fix everything and that they will lose weight and get lean and be healthy. But they're not realizing that no matter how hard they train, we can't out-train a bad diet. Sure, more cardio can help, no doubt, but it's not a silver bullet. And this is why that metabolic gap that I talked about in the previous truth is so important. Because with that gap, it doesn't matter how much exercise you do because you're still gonna have your body in a fat loss mode where your metabolism will be burning off more body fat regardless of how much exercise you actually do or don't do. Because you simply won't be eating past your body's ability to burn off energy. And while it's essential to maintain this gap in your diet if you do wanna lose weight and body fat, there's also a simple or a hard way to do it, which I'm gonna explain in truth number four. Imagine you're holding a thick rubber band, and if you stretch it too far, it's gonna break or snap back. Then you may get slapped and left with a 
red welt on your skin. And this kind of resembles how most guys approach dieting by starving themselves to see a quick result until that plan backfires along with the weight rebounding and spiking back up. And that's because depriving yourself too much is what creates those intense cravings. And then eventually all it takes is one big binge to undo weeks of tough restriction and deprivation, which will then ruin your momentum and motivation to keep going. It's like a negative spiral. But the fact is you still need to eat under your metabolic burn to create this gap. So this is why no matter how much weight and body fat you need to lose, it's very important to factor in real life moments like family dinners, a beer with the buddies, the occasional cookie or ice cream with the kids. Because if you know that you're allowed to eat these foods and enjoy the occasional indulgence, it will massively increase your long-term success. Sustainability is the secret that beats speed every time. And so now that we've covered a few truths around diet, there are a few other factors that become more crucial every decade after 30. Truth number five. So let's pretend that your muscle mass is like a savings account. And if you don't make regular deposits, that balance of savings starts to dwindle. In other words, if you're not actively working to maintain your muscle mass, you will start to lose it. This is crucial for us men beyond 30 because naturally, as we age, we start to lose more muscle mass. Even as early as 40, men can start experiencing the effects of sarcopenia, which is the gradual loss of muscle, which is also linked to metabolic disease, weaknesses, frail bones, and just looking and feeling older than our age. And with less muscle, our BMR also reduces, making it even easier to gain more body fat. So my point is we want more muscle long-term, but rather than trying to cram in five or six workouts every week and risk burning out, getting injured, or not being able to actually sustain that, you will gain more muscle and strength if you just focus on consistently doing fewer workouts that are strategically planned, that are progressive, so that you will build more and more muscle month to month and year to year. That way it makes it easier to stay lean. It'll keep your body, your bones and your joints stronger. And the reality is muscle is really our most powerful longevity organ. Because in general, men who maintain more muscle in their 40s, 50s and 60s, they look younger, they act younger, they feel younger. There's really no secret to it. They just have more muscle mass. But the problem is most guys are wasting time in the gym without seeing any noticeable results in their physique. And in this next truth, number six, I'm gonna explain why. So imagine you're in the car and you're driving to a destination, but you don't have Google Maps. You eventually might get there, but you'll likely waste a lot of time taking wrong turns, doing loops around the wrong blocks, maybe even stopping to ask a local on where to go. And all that is very frustrating when we could have got there a lot quicker. On the other hand, if you have Google Maps up, it's gonna guide you on every single turn and give you the fastest route to a destination without wasting any time no matter how much traffic there is. And this is like the difference between hitting the gym six days a week, cutting out all carbs, all snacks, sugar, no alcohol, no, no fast food, nothing, which is pretty much what most people do and that's what people tell them to do versus using data to guide you in the right direction, just like Google Maps would. So at the very least, I'm talking about tracking your body weight and your daily food intake at the absolute least. Because by collecting data, you can then focus on your weekly averages. And this becomes the indicator that tells you which direction you're heading, whether you're losing more body fat or gaining more body fat, or just staying in a plateau. So not only does data help us stay on course, heading the right direction, without needing to do any extreme diets, tactics, or methods. So tracking metrics like your nutrition, your weight, your body fat percentage, your steps, your workout performance, and even your muscle mass is crucial long-term data. And I've found that implementing this data-driven approach with my clients, it makes them more accountable than they could have ever been because they can see everything right there in front of them and it keeps it top of mind every day so they can make better decisions as they go throughout their busy schedules and lives. And then that way I can give them clear targets to hit and we can make optimizations and changes when it's required to continue progressing through different phases. And it kind of just overall makes it more motivating and more fun, kind of like a game. So this is why at the very least I recommend, you know, using a Google Sheet or simple apps like my fitness pal or a fitness tracking app like Fitbit or Garmin or Apple Watch. There's so many options these days. 
and I use these tools religiously with my clients every day, every week, every month. With that said, there is a deeper layer that most men are sleeping on, which could just change their life for the better. And I'll show you why in truth number seven. So say you take your car to the mechanic and they take a quick glance at the outside of it, turn it on for five seconds, then they hand you the bill while they're telling you the problem. Without looking under the hood, without checking the oil or anything else, the chances are your vehicle is going to have future problems that were missed that they could have inspected. This relates to our internal health. So while it's still 100% important to track all the metrics I just discussed, that's also just the surface level. Because to truly understand what's going on under the skin, inside of our body, we need to dive a little bit deep by getting annual blood tests. This way you can stay on top of your testosterone levels, your metabolic health, your thyroid, your immune health, stress and cortisol levels, vitamin and minerals, and much, much more that's available to us these days just through a simple, quick, blood test. Not only is this one of the best ways to optimize your internal health long term, it's also one of the best ways to avoid future health problems that often go undiagnosed for many years when they could have been prevented early just by getting a simple blood test. It's also why a blood work analysis has become part of my program to make sure that clients are going deeper and looking into their internal health and not just focusing on, you know, muscle and looking ripped. It's also about being healthy, feeling healthy, having more energy and living a longer life. With that said, not all doctors care enough to go this deep. So it's important that you find a doctor who will work with you to go deeper into the blood tests and look at the results and, and consider alternative methods that you can deal with problems or just implement to feel better every day. Once I found the right doctor, my internal health and an immune disease and gut health improved dramatically, which the generic doctors just had no idea about. I don't hate generic doctors. I'm just saying be careful with who you work with because some of them resort to medications, whereas others will do a bit more research and help you find alternative methods that won't harm your body and will solve the problem without having to take prescriptions or even get surgeries or anything crazy like that. But there's still one ultimate truth that will ruin all the last seven truths if we ignore this. Here is why. Truth number eight. So when a builder is constructing a house, it doesn't matter how good the windows and the doors are if the foundation isn't solid. A poor foundation puts the entire structure at risk of collapse or long-term defects. So my point is, it doesn't matter if your diet and training is fine-tuned and dialed in if your lifestyle does not support them long-term. This is the biggest fact of men looking and feeling 10 years younger, being full of energy and just feeling great about themselves. It's their lifestyle. And so it's important to accept getting into great shape may take longer than what you think it will. And that's completely fine. Because for most men, it often takes decades to gain 30, 40, 50 plus pounds. So if it took you six to 12 months, say even two years to lose the belly for good, that is an awesome achievement and you should be proud of yourself. And the fact is your missus or your parents or even your kids, they can't force you to change. And be it your boss or your clients or your colleagues, anyone, they're not gonna care if you're 300 pounds. So the truth that I'm getting at is you need to commit to yourself first. As selfish as that sounds, you need to honor that commitment. And when you do, and you get the results, you will inspire your missus, your kids, your boss, your friends, your buddies, your parents, because you took the lead and you did it first. And if you're looking for a step-by-step -step approach to do that and start taking action and getting results within this week without doing crazy diets or spending every spare moment living in the gym, I will show you where to start in this video right here. What you need to do where I'll walk you through to get your metabolism burning off more body fat consistently with a sustainable approach. Go check it out now. If you have any questions, drop in the comments, more than happy to answer them.